Bask in the beauty of Barcelona. Admire the armada of accomplished pros from across the Atlantic. When you're on a winning streak, your confidence is at an all-time high. Right now, I really do want to win this tournament. It's the biggest buy-in I've ever played, the biggest single buy-in at least. But the Russian Revolution is shaking things up in the super high roller. Важно где там по 50, по 100 тысяч, там по 25 не важно. Я, конечно, буду играть вот турнир, где более сильный состав. One noisy neighbor also wants to say. Какое там турнире? То в любом случае это не значит, что ты самый лучший, ты самый сильный, ты самый крутой и так далее. The stakes are high. The stats are simple. 55 came to Spain. 28 remain. Only eight will get paid. Barcelona boasts some of Spain's most spectacular architecture, from the gorgeous Gothic quarter to the grand designs of Antoni Gaudi. But the only designs our remaining players have are on the coveted trophy and a seven-figure payday. 55 registered for the Pokestars.com EPT Super High Roller, with nine reloads on top of the 50,000 euro entry fee. There's a prize pool of more than three million to split between the final eight. The winner will bank more than a million. Last time, the field was cut to 28. Phil Ivey and Daniel Negreanu among those who bought back in only to bow out. Despite his triple entry, Jonathan Duhamel was tripped up again, this time by Vadim Kurzovic, who also sent Elkie packing. But it was all smiles for Dan Smith. He shot up the standings on day two with some seriously slick play against Eric Seidel. Yes, I'm doing all right. <laughs> Well, we thought today might be a long day, but it only took two hours to lose nearly a third of the field. You'd think to the tune of 50,000 euros, everyone would be playing a bit more cautiously. Jonathan Duhamel bought in three times, everybody. And speaking of playing fast, our feature table might feel a little internet-y as the table's only legit grown-up, Eric Seidel, is completely surrounded by a gaggle of button-clicking whippersnappers. Well, Seidel has finally outlasted Daniel Negreanu in one of these tournaments, and we'll now be looking to put some distance between them on the all-time money list. He does have another Daniel to contend with, however, as Danny Smith, a.k.a. King Dan, is sitting directly to his left and has the tournament chip lead. It looks like Smith has not lost his spark since signing off last season's grand final with three side event wins. Add to that five other big caches this year, including more than a million in Melbourne. I think when you're winning, other players tend to be a little bit afraid of you, and you can run them over a bit. But showing no fear, Eric Seidel, still on the hunt for his first EPT Super High Roller title, and now surrounded by some of Smith's best buddies, including the quiet man from Mexico. You know, it's a really tough field with a lot of really, really good players, so I get to test my skills against them. From quiet to silent, but where the stare of the mesmerizing McDonald. There are certain like live pros that are intimidating to play against when they, when they stare you down. And then I just figured, you know, maybe I should start doing that. And from one former EPT champ to another, keep an eye on the boy from Belarus. Она как бы, ну это много денег, естественно, это это приятно для любого человека, это очень солидные деньги. I love how Vadim calls this a considerable amount of money. I would consider selling out everyone I know for this amount of money. Cold War is over, so it's totally okay for us to spy on these Russians. Eugene Katsalov knows what I'm talking about. Jason Mercier's got two gold bracelets, and his fiance has got a big fat ring, so she wins. A few of these guys are rooming together. Yep. 50,000 euro poker tournament. They share a room with four other dudes. Makes perfect sense. Let's look at the lineup at our feature table. We've got the tournament chip leader, Dan Smith, and his roommate, Michael Watson. We've got one of the other big stacks in the tournament, Simon Ravensbeck, and the short stack, Ziv Bakar, playing three and a half big blinds. Ziv is going to have zip if he doesn't do something soon. Blinds are 5,000 and 10,000 with a 1,000 ante. Dan Smith will fold under the gun. 
Chris Mormon gets out of the way. Ziv makes his move with ace-10. Pretty much had to shove with any two. So showing this is a no-brainer and a miracle. Raven Speck doesn't give him action. JC Alvarado folds the button. Michael Watson gives up the small blind. Eric Seidel in the big. Has 9-6. Eric has to call. Not great. He's got insane pot odds from the big blind, and honestly, he could be even ahead given Bakar's chips. Seidel with 33% equity. So Bakara, two to one favorite to double up here. Oh! The six on the flop sees Seidel take the lead. Bakar still got two overs, and he can hit backdoor spades. The turn is an ace. Oh! Again. Bakar now a nine to one favorite to double up. Just has to fade nines and sixes. And there's a six for a third and final time. Oh! Seidel takes all of Bakar's chips, and he is eliminated from the tournament. At least Bakar had time to buy aftershave at the airport on his way here. <laughs> you play so bad, Seidel. 9-6, you fish. Still below average in chips. How far are we from the money, Hardigan? A long way. 27 remain, only 8 get paid. Yikes. Chris Mormon with 7-5 off suit. Mormon stakes a lot of poker players. He's also had some decent caches of his own. Okay, so for mere mortals, y'all shouldn't be doing this stuff like this, but uh, for Mormon, it's fine. But I will call this loose. And under the gun raised to 22,000. Simon Ravensbeck with King-10 suited. I think this is a perfect spot for a call. King-10 of hearts flops very well. That's not a call, that's a re-raise. Ravensbeck three bets to 52,000. Not a huge fan of this three bet. And look at this. Alvarado wakes up with queens in the cutoff and four bets to 115,000. Mike Watson, Eric Seidel both fold. Dan Smith gets out of the way. Back on Mormon. Oh, no. Looks like Mormon is one of the mere mortals. He's losing his mind, James. Okay. Chris Mormon moves all in. And JC Alvarado calls him. Mormon either assuming JC has nothing or that he can make him fold a monster. I don't see JC four bet folding anything better than tens in that spot. Mormons all right, right. Good play, mate. Good play. 1.1 million in the pot, and that's not a bad flop for seven five. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Smith is laughing. Call me crazy, but I think it's okay to have fun at the poker table. There's mean laughter, and then there's this. Chris Mormon has eight outs. Make that five outs. He needs the case seven or a four for a straight. The river. Is a queen, a house for Alvarado. Yeah. Wasn't easy. Nah, it was pretty easy. Guy gifted you his chips. He flopped the pair, brick, brick, ship it. Dealer did all the work, seemed pretty easy to me. Hey, if uh, Chris Mormon wants to give away any more money, uh, I'm in room 111. His seat is officially open. I was pretty sure he wasn't gonna be able to resist. Room 111. Let's head over to our secondary feature table. The push that pot to Jason Mercer technique shown here being executed perfectly by Monica, I might add, nice job, Monica, is actually a chapter in several dealer training manuals around the world. And there's Eugene Kachalov. Yeah, some of those chips that just got shipped to Jason used to belong to Eugene. Oh. On one of the outer tables, Sami Galopuro has called the all-in of Artem Litvinov. Litvinov is ahead. Lars Luzak needs to get lucky, lest he loses to Litvinov. Boom! I have my fun. Kelopuro needs a jack. And he needs it on the river. Come on. Litvinov lives and lingers. Lars Luzak laments. Sigh. Litvinov, no stranger to high roller tournaments, finished fifth in the 25K event in Monaco last season. Still pretty short despite that double up. Back to the main stage we go. Action will be on JC Alvarado. Did you see that explosion on the screen? It was crazy. Oh. He folds. Michael Watson, 6-5 suited. Nice. Raises, makes it 22K. Eric Seidel has pocket sixes. Likely to see a call. Sure enough, Eric does call. 
Dan Smith on the button has ace-king. Dan's almost certainly going to three-bet here in position with all that action behind him. And don't forget those massive yes. chips. He re-raises to 63,000. Sam Chartier's just joined the feature table. He folds. Simon Ravensbeck also has ace-king. Another ace-king out there. This is going to make things pretty crazy. Ravensbeck four bets to 134,000. Watson and Seidel both fold. Now nah, this is a little less exciting now since these two are destined to chop. Smith five bets. I'm all in. Ravensbeck oh. moves all in and Smith calls. This guy Ravensbeck must have some rep considering none of these guys ever appear to be afraid to get it in with him. 96% chance of a chop. No reason to hide that gorge face now. The flop Ooh. has two Ooh. spades on it and Smith holds the ace of spades. Backdoor sweat. And there's a spade on the turn. Oh, come on. That would be too gross, right? Did anyone else holding spades? I don't want to know. Trust me, neither does Robin's back. And the river brings another spade. Oh. Oof. That was less cool than talking about a guy's bachelor party in front of his wife. That was grotesque. Dan, it's, it's OK if you want to laugh. Ravens bet gets four flush and a big stack is taken out by the chip leader who now has close to 2.8 million, a phenomenal number of chips. Can we please lose another player soon? That average makes me uncomfortable. The power of Timex compels you. Well, Timex is actually a four to one dog here. Bully Chev, an 80% favorite to double up. Timex flops a gutter ball. Six or a nine would crack those aces. The turn is a 10. McDonald open-ended now. And the river, a nine, a set for McDonald. Yamo be there. Ilya Bulachev sent to the rail. And most importantly, the tournament average is not the sign of the devil, sign of the devil. Mike McDonald now has more than a million in chips. He's one of four players in the tournament with a seven-figure stack, the other three being Steve O'Dwyer, JC Alvarado, and Dan Smith, who now has 279 big blinds after that huge coup against Simon Ravensbeck who'd been the tournament chip leader about 50 minutes ago. Sounds really crazy, but I feel... Actually, I feel more sorry for the guys who invested in me. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I expected a lot more myself, but... Hey, I, I think I played uh, pretty good, so I'm... All right, I'm satisfied, but what's my time? So with those simultaneous strikeouts, the field's now down to the last 23. And overdue for a redraw. Time for Litvinov to recharge his batteries and for the rest to take a brief time out. Join us after the break. Barcelona, once home to two of the world's most famous artists, Pablo Picasso and Salvador Dali. And the current residents are some of the world's top Holden players. The Poker Stars EPT Super High Roller, it's the Season 9 opening event, and we're down to just three tables. Before the break, we saw Dan Smith and Mike McDonald poleaxe their opponents at precisely the same time. That means 23 names went into the redraw, with Smith and McDonald now sharing center stage. But it's the secondary feature table stealing the show early on. This is the first hand after the redraw, a three-way all-in. Ilodi Sahamias has them both covered. So Mercia and Kachlov at risk. Kachlov needs a 10, Mercia needs a queen. And there's a queen! You can tell Jason's been working on his game. Eugene Kachlov eliminated. Classic Merce dog, right, Eugene? A blow to the stack of Sahamias. Classic Merce dog. Ro, ro, ro. Merce dog! A huge near triple up for Jason Mercier. I don't know who else is on Team Just Good Luck, but I have a feeling it's like that old baseball cartoon where Bugs Bunny plays every position himself. Team Good Luck, first base, Jason Mercier. Second base, Jason Mercier. Third base, Elkie. Let's meet the players on our feature table. Remember, the top eight will get a slice of the three million euro prize pool. Action's been started by Vadim Kursovic, an under-the-gun plus-one raise to 22,000 with ace-king. Mike McDonald is on the button with ace-three suited. Perfectly fine hand at three bet with. Sometimes they'll fold, sometimes they call, and you can flop big. So McDonald re-raises to 52,000. 
Mike Watson folds the small blind. Jim McCrink in the big blind. Will also fold back on Kurtovich. More bets coming. And the Belarusian re-raises a four bet to 132K. Gulp. Now, you don't really want to call it ace trade because it doesn't flop well very often. It wins way more with a three bet than it does after seeing a flop. No shame in folding that. Kurtovich had 73,000 to his stack. Up to nearly 800K. Mike McDonald hates being compared to the singer so much he folded right there just so no one could say he was taking it to the streets. Back to the secondary feature table. Looks like it's round two between Mercia and Sahamias. Once again, Jason has queens. Sahamias has flopped the nut flush draw. Rolling. And he shoves. This isn't a terrible move to make with the nut flush draw, but it kind of gives away your hand. What's it going to be, Merce Dog? <laughs> he calls. Jason's in front for now. Two cards to come. Ilari hits his diamond on the turn, and he will double up here. Mercier drawn dead. Which means the massage can resume. I think that massage therapist might be a sorceress. Aw, sad Merce Dog. Yep, he gave up most of the chips. He just won. Sahami is now over a million. Right now, that sorceress massage therapist is using the power of the crystal skull to float the camera back over to the feature table, like in Chronicle. Blinds are up to 6,000 and 12,000 with a 2,000 ante. Action on the feature table has been folded around to Dan Smith, who also passes. Madam Kurtovich on the button. He's had a very good 18 months on the poker circuit. Plus, he enjoys the odd karaoke session. Really? Never would have guessed. With ace deuce on the button, he raises to 26,000. JC Alvarado folds the small blind. Sammy Galapuro has jack seven in the big blind. Kid looks a little like Taylor Lautner, no? Team Jacob, peeps. I hope he doesn't turn into a wolf, because that would be scary. Kursovich could be the vampire. Ace, four, four. Well, there's an interesting flop. Top pair for Kursovich, flush draw for Sammy. Kalapuro checks to the razor. Kurtovich continues to 30,000. This is a spot where Kalapuro could raise, but he's pretty much pot committed if he does. He just calls. Six of hearts on the turn. Kalapuro checks a second time. Kurtovich fire another barrel. No, he checks behind. Slows down in case he's up against a bigger ace. Queen of spades. The board bricks out for Kalapuro. Bluff Tony. He bets 37,000. That card was kind of a brick, so it might be tough for him to rep much. His range would be pretty wide out of the big blind, but no draws came in. Kurzovic raises. Is this a value raise or a bluff? I love this raise. It's got a dual purpose, actually. He can sometimes get value so thin and so sick it'd have to be played by Tom Hanks. And two, he can sometimes blow Sammy off a chop. Galapuro folds. Kurzovic gets his stack up to 891,000. Back to our secondary feature table once again. Yuha Helpi all in with ace-jack, called by Anatoly Gertovoy with fives. Helpi's gonna need some help, P. No ace-queen or jack on the river. He's busto. And not even so much as a friendly consolation glance from the other Finn. First he gets a cold deck, then he gets a cold shoulder. Anatoly Gertovoy up to 780,000. He's moving up the leaderboard right now. He is seventh in chips overall. We may have lost Helpy and Kalapura may be short, but Ilari Sahamias is flying the flag for Finland in fourth. Dan Smith still out in front, the man to beat with a stack of over 2.6 million. Over to the outer table. We find Tobias Reinkemeyer currently eighth in chips. Involved in hand against Eric Seidel and Scott Seaver. This board is a little sloppy. Club draw, all baby aces have some kind of made hand or draw. With the action check to Rankamai, he bets 55,000, gets a fold from Seidel. Scott Seaver was suffering through a migraine yesterday, which meant we had to suffer through a massage therapist who looked like she was working out a loaf of raw gingerbread. Seaver calls Rankamai's bet. Sorry, I meant to say ginger beard. Queen of diamonds on the river. Seaver checks to Rankamai again. Queen shouldn't have changed much. The German bets again. 
100,000. Siva calls. And Reinkemeyer shows oh, deuces God. for a flop set. Very lucky. I'm very lucky. See a top pair on the flop. That queen didn't change much, except for maybe limit how much Tobias thought he could bet on the river. Things certainly could have gone much, much worse for Scott Seaver on that hand. Ryan Kamaya adds 245,000 to his stack. I swear I almost raised the turn. And I almost became a professional bowler. Looks like we both dodged bullets. Ryan Kamaya up to 772K. Busto in the 50K lost a million ship pot to JC Alvarado. <laughs> did not, in, ca in capital letters, did not get it in good. <laughs> Brownie face. This is where I'd normally make a joke, but I think Waldorf and Statler over there have it covered. Back to our feature table. Smith and Kursovic in the blinds. Alvarado folds under the gun. Sammy Kelepuro's out. Mike McDonald has ace nine. Not gonna play that. Ace three suited for Michael Watson. Seems reasonable. And from the cutoff, he will raise to 27,000. Jim McCrink. 7-9 off on the button. Probably not. That goes in the muck. 7-10 suited for Dan Smith. Dan's out of position, so if he plays, he's mostly going to be three betting, especially with a hand like this. We know he doesn't want to see diamonds peel off. Well, he does re-raise to 98,000. Now, you might think Dan's three bet was borderline considering he was out of position, but with a big stack like that, you've got to exert the pressure. Adam Kurzovic also has ace three suited, and he looks serious. He always looks serious, but it does look like there may be a pre-flop war developing here. Wow, Kurzovic four bets to 203,000. A cold four bet almost always is gonna look huge, or as my dad would say, huge. Mike Watson's done, as is Dan Smith. Well played by Kursovich. All these guys are pretty deep, especially Dan, so monkeying around pre-flop is going to be rampant. So the Belarusian creeps over the million chip mark. Tell you what, he's a bit tasty at the pokers, this Kursovich chap. He won EPT Dovo last season, and now he's playing in the biggest buy-in tournament of his career. Мое выступление на вкупе очень придало уверенность. Сейчас тоже становлюсь сильнее, что-то подмечаю, какой-то опыт нарабатывается. Поэтому любой турнир, в котором я принимал участие и глубоко прошел, он позволял мне улучшать свои навыки. Но это мой первый такой большой турнир. Это очень большие деньги, 50 тысяч евро. Небольшой состав, но все, все как бы топовые игроки, знаменитые, популярные. Большинство играло там. Мне было интересно как бы с ними посражаться. Ну, я много чего нового для себя подметил. Ну, как бы, да, все люди делают ошибки, я тоже делаю, делаю ошибки. Но, как бы, с турниром к турниру какие-то опыт, навыки приобретаются. Поэтому надеюсь, что дальше у меня тоже все будет складываться хорошо в турнирах. I don't know, James. I see Vadim Kursovich going deep in a lot of these EPTs. He might be one of the best poker players in the world. Certainly Belarus, at least. Top 100 Belarusian players for sure. Well, let's check on his geographical neighbor, Anatoly Gertoboy. Who's just shoved. All in. All in. Putting Jason Mercier all in. It's a race, and Jason Mercier is bursting out of his skin with excitement. He's the player at risk. He needs an ace or a 10. There's a six in the window. <laughs> that was a painfully slow window. Get a good look at that six. Yep. Jason Mercy now drawing dead. And the Merce dog is back to the pound. <laughs> His chip slide across to Anatoly Gertovoy, who has nearly 1.2 million. So with Jason Mercy's elimination, we are down to 20. And the action continues here from Barcelona after the break. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to PokerStars.com, where there are qualifiers every day.
There's a million reasons to fall in love with Barcelona, but more than three million reasons why the world's top poker pros are in town. 55 players ponied up one of the biggest buy-ins Europe's ever seen. Now we're edging ever closer to a payday for those still in. The PokerStars.com EPT Super High Roller. These guys have still got a ways to go before they make the money. They're only paying the top eight players, so batten down the hatches, boys. This is far from over. 19 remain. Action on the feature table is on Jim McCrink. He will fold from under the gun. Dan Smith, the tournament chip leader, is Jack Four. He'll muck that. Adam Kursovich gets out of the way. JC Alvarado, ace jack suited. Nice hand for mid to late position. He starts the hand with a stack of 1.1 million, and he raises to 30,000 from the cutoff. Sammy Kelleporo folds the button. Mike McDonald gives up the small blind. Mike Watson has 10-6 suited in the big blind. Well, this is a fold as far as I'm concerned. Those are raising chips. Mike Watson, three bets to 90,000. Mike isn't super deep, but this can still be a profitable play. It's going to get a fold pretty often, and when it doesn't, like right now, there are still some draws you can flop. Alvarado calls in position, and we go heads up to the flop, which is 7-5-8. Alvarado with two overs and the nut flush draw. Watson with a straight draw. Now, even though both flop draws, Mike's got fewer outs than he thinks, and JC's got all kinds of redraws, even if Mike does hit. Watson continues, bets 85,000. I'm all in. Alvarado shoves. Mike's not getting the right price to call, and for the reasons I just mentioned, he might be recognizing that he's got a few dirty outs as well. Watson will lay it down. JC's playing like another JC I know pretty well. Maybe you've heard of him. He has a lot of followers known for pulling off miracles. Tran, JC Tran. Really good poker player. <laughs> Let's head to the outer table. Scott Siva versus Artem Litmanov. Close. Good. I have full house. Everyone has full house. They're not in hand, they have full house. I have a full house. Pocket eight again? Yeah. Pocket eight again. I knew it. The moment you I knew you had pocket eights again. Ah, you're bluffing. <laughs> yeah. Litvinov calls yeah. Siva's bet on the river, and his full house is good. Why are you calling a flop? Why you bet the flop? I was good. You had I six high. I very good hand. You hand. had six high. I had seven no. high. I bet a flop because yes. I know last card six, oh. and I have full house. Oh, okay. Why you that, call? That is a good... Why you call? Because I knew you. Because I could read your cards. I knew you had six high, but I did not know the river. Ah. So it all makes sense. <laughs> okay, okay. Sigh. <laughs> Laugh. Good to see players having fun in the tournament as we head back to the feature table. I'm having fun too. I'm so glad. I'll let everyone know that they're paying 50,000 euros just to amuse you. Seems well worth it to me. Kersovic under the gun, pocket deuces. He raises, makes it 27,000. King five for Alvarado, he'll fold. Sammy Kelleporo gets out of the way. Mike McDonald has aces. Every Canadian's favorite hand, A-A. McDonald, well, three bet, raises to 77,000. Mike Watson folds from the button. Jim McCrink in the small blind. Jack three, that'll go in the muck. Dan Smith in the big blind. We'll also fold, so we're back on Kursovich. Kursovich is super deep, over 80 big blinds. He can try to call here, flop a set, and win himself a monster pot. That's called implied odds. He does call. A jack-9-5 flop with two clubs. No set, no bet. Kursovich checks. Mike McDonald will continue. Betting 88,000. Well, obviously, Kurzovic wasn't just set mining, since now it looks like he's hoping he can get this to showdown. He calls. 362,000 in the pot. The eight of clubs on the turn. Both players turn a flush draw, one slightly better than the other. Kurzovic now leads. He bets 132K. This is a really gross board for his hand, and 
hey, maybe Michael Foldace is in the nut flush draw, and maybe one day I'll date Liv Bree. Mike McDonald calls. He's probably a little worried about this board texture, but his hand is almost always going to be good. The board pairs on the river. That's a gross river card, but it's pretty doubtful Vadim would ever lead the turn with a jack, so Mike's probably feeling pretty confident. Kurzovic took the betting lead on the turn, and he bets again on the river, 265,000. Now, flush is a decent part of Vadim's range that Mike is losing to, but if Mike thinks those are the only hands that beat him in this spot, this is still a call. What am I talking about? It's aces. Of course, it's a call, always. He does call, and Kurzovic will lose a million chip pot. Yam will be there. Mike McDonald wins a huge pot. And what should have been a simple set mine for Vadim Kursovic ended up with him falling completely into the shaft. Mike McDonald now up to over 2 million in chips. Kursovic lost about half his stack there. The Belarusian drops off the leaderboard, but the Russian player Anatoly Gertovoy is still in the top five. And Mike McDonald has closed the gap between himself and Dan Smith. Both players up over two million now. Mike McDonald, still the youngest player ever to win an EPT event, and he's come close to winning a second title on several occasions. He's now a mainstay on the tour and a feisty figure to come up against. Honestly, would you dare to take on that stare? Yeah, the, uh, the signature stare down is really uh, just something I started about eight months ago. There are certain like live pros that are intimidating to play against when they, when they stare you down. And then I just figured, you know, maybe I should start doing that and just see if I feel comfortable with it. I just realized there were so many things during that that I like picked up at the table that I would have missed if I had just been, you know, staring at the table. A lot of times you like you see so much at the table that certain people just have certain mannerisms, like uh, like a facial tick or like uh, something they do with their hands where they do that and then you know, 30 seconds later they're folding, probably with like 85 plus percent consistency, I could guess what they're going to be doing, like whether they're going to be re-raising, what they're going to be calling, whether they're going to be folding. I've had a lot of people who just say like, you know, I look as if I want to kill them at the table, and I don't, I don't mean to look super mean, but I guess when I'm just really focused, I end up looking pretty mean at the table. It does look pretty mean, and it makes me feel weird on the inside. How does it make you feel? Let us know and tag it. EPT Barcelona. It makes parts of me move. On the secondary feature table, it's John Juanda against Ilari Samias. They've both got the same hand. And this is going to be a chop. They both make the nuts straight. They're going crazy. It's Pandemonium 2012. A check from Ilari. He's obviously hoping Jawanda will bet at it. There's a better chance Jawanda would bet than he would call a bet. This gives him a chance to bet all of his bluffs too, even though we know he's not bluffing. Jawanda makes it 128,000. Hillary obviously not folding, but it'd be pretty tough to get action on a raise from anything that doesn't have him beat. Samias so calls, they both show the same hand, chop it up. Everybody loves a chop pot. Yeah. <laughs> Let's head over to the third table, the outer table. Action is on Eric Seidel. That's seven-time bracelet winner to you, James. What you got there, Eric? Little chicken soup for the poker soul? Talal Shikurchi has bet 156,000 on the turn. Eric Seidel makes the call. Seidel's getting pretty short after that call. A normal size bet on the turn would make up most of his stack. The river brings a fourth club. Seidel checks. And Shikurchi checks behind with a flush. Ah, Shikurji had flopped a set of jacks, but it looks like he was a little afraid of that fourth club there on the river. I guess there were two cards out there that could beat him. Don't you deal in hedge funds? Where's the risk? Where's the thin value? I'm just kidding. I would have checked, too. Maybe even just folded outright. I'm asking me why I didn't put the last piece in. <coughs> strange, why do winners always want consolation from the guy they just beat? Lines are up to 8 and 16,000 with a 2K ante. Action is on Jim McCrank, who has Jack-10 suited. This hand is just adorable. Late position. Expect to see a raise. McCrank makes it 37,000. Ace-9 for Dan Smith. And from the button, he will call. Now, I don't think Dan just calls there unless he thinks there's a pretty good chance he can outplay McCrank after the flop. Kurzovic and Alvarado. Fold from the blinds. We go heads up to the flop. 
But Crink out of position, but with the betting lead. And he spikes second pair on that flop. This is pretty much one of the best flops you can be looking for with this hand. Should be pretty easy to continue. 35. 35,000 is the bet. Dan Smith. He's coming in for a raise. Hardigan, is there anyone on the EPT who's going to do anything about this blatant ageism? 88,000. Not sure Dan Smith would ever try this move on anyone under the age of 35. McCrink can't fold here, surely. By the way, McCrink should definitely not fold. He does fold. Dan Smith often looks like the cat who ate the canary, but this time I can see the yellow feather hanging out of his mouth. Don't sweat it, McCrink. It happens. How long till Dan Smith breaks the three million barrier? Tag your tweets. EPT Barcelona. As the end of the Spanish siesta brings the Catalan capital back to life, it's also starting to get lively in the Casino Barcelona. There are three tables still in play at the Pokestars.com EPT Super High Roller. Before the break, tournament leader Dan Smith sent his chip count soaring towards the three million mark. We'll be back to check on him in a moment. First, let's see what's happening on the other two tables. <gasps> I think we're losing Scott Seaver. We did. See Always you. a pleasure. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Yeah. Shave it off. Yeah. Exactly. I hope to God he was talking about the beard. The face beard. Artem Litvinov, the beneficiary of Siva's chips, were down to the final 18. Now Scott Siva's off to enter the world of Tron. Meow. Well, there's another all-in at our secondary feature table. Peter Jetton at risk with Queen Jack. Anatoly Gersavoy with sevens. Two diamonds on the flop. <laughs> Jetton with pretty much the best flop imaginable for making nothing. Gertavoy ahead, but not the favorite. Jetton now has 20 outs. Oh my goodness. That would be a hell of a brick out. Yes. He gets there on the river. He doubles up to not that much at all. <laughs> Still less than 20 bigs after that. Gertavoy takes a bit of a hit, down to 1.5 million. Here comes the main feature table fake out. Yeah, because there is another all-in. Sami Kalapuro, the player at risk, and he's just been KO'd by Steve O'Dwyer. Steve O's suck out is more like it. He just cracked aces with jacks. Okay, thank you. Although O'Dwyer is still short himself. <clears throat> so we're down to the final 17. Line still at 8.16 with a 2K ante. Action on the feature table is on Mike Watson. King eight, he'll fold that. Jim McCrink. Ten deuce. He'll pass. Eventually. Dan Smith, Jack Nine off suit. Smith, the overwhelming tournament chip leader. It's been folded to him. He's in relatively late position. Yeah, he's in the cutoff. He raises to 36,000. Gets rid of Kursovic on the button. Kursovic folds a dominating hand. JC Alvarado folds the small blind. Mike McDonald has Jack-10 in the big blind. Also has Smith dominated, but he is out of position. Looks like Mike will defend, and we will see a flop. That flop, seven Jack-9, two pair for Smith, the straight draw and top pair for McDonald. This flop is the worst thing that happened to a McDonald since trans fats got banned. McDonald checks to the razor. Smith continues for 52,000. Even though Mike's way behind top pair and a good gut shot is almost just as good. Just not quite. McDonald calls. Looks like he might even think his hand is too strong to raise there. The turn. It's another jack, another full house for Dan Smith. McDonald improves to trips. This is just getting insanely bad. This is the worst thing to happen to a McDonald since New York City banned large sodas. McDonald checks a second time. Smith. Or better second time by the looks of things. Sure enough, 133,000. There's a good shot. Mike just calls again, wanting Dan to keep repping that jack, which he is doing because he has it. 
How much is Mike McDonald going to lose in this hand? At least another 133,000. Yeah, he calls, taking us to the river. 462,000 in the pot. No 10 on the river. Smith's still good. Let's see how Mike plays this. Does he lead the river and hope for a call? No, he checks the river and hopes for a bet. He's going to get it. He is going to get it. 371,000. That is a huge bet. Now Mike might be worried Dan's actually got a better jack. This is one of those polarizing bet sizes. Dan's not doing this with most of his non-nut value hands. Oh. Mike calls. Whoops. 1.2 million chip pot will slide across to Dan Smith. There's really not much you can do there. You get a fold three jacks? No. Dan was just a cold deck. The worst thing to happen to a McDonald's since heart disease. Dan Smith is now playing nearly 3.5 million. He has more than three times the tournament average. He's riding the chip train up Cha-Ching Mountain. Woo -woo! Let's ignore that terrible train impersonation and focus on the man who is dominating this tournament. My senior year of high school, I started to do well with poker. And I was starting to think that maybe I would be able to pay for my own way to college. And it was around that time that I was thinking like, okay, something I can get serious about. After uh, one year of college, I was looking at it and I was spending like 35,000 a year on school. And because I was playing poker, I wasn't going to like a lot of my classes and it just didn't interest me that much. And I just thought um, at that point in my life, it wasn't for me and the money had a lot to do with it. It was incredibly expensive. I wanted to travel around and see the world and play poker tournaments, and I didn't think my professors would be too keen on me blowing off like exams, but I, went, I wanted to go to Europe for two weeks or whatever. When people uh, ask me if I regret going, like not going to college, then there are some things I wish I were a bit more knowledgeable about, but I'm incredibly happy with where I am in my life, and. If dropping out to play poker tournaments around the world is what got me here, I wouldn't change anything. The EPT would like to remind all of you to stay in school, or I'm going to come over to your house and punch you in the stomach. OK. On the outer table, it's Talal Shikurchi versus Artem Litvinov. Shikurchi betting the turn here, 155,000. This board is a lot like the cheerleaders in my hometown. Real easy to have a piece of it. Litvinov looks tortured. Shakurchi looks bored. Is Litvinov actually still awake? I think so. He's moving. Ah. Is he doing what I think he's doing? He's reaching for the coin. Yes! All right, you guys shut up and watch this. When faced with a borderline decision, Artem Litvinov will consult the coin. Wait for it. Wait for it. We often talk about flips in poker. We're about to see a literal coin flip. What does the coin say, Artem? The coin says, fold those sixes. I have to say that's way more entertaining than watching guys tank for three times as long and come to the exact same conclusion. My guess is it'll take at least one or two more times before it gets super, super old. Shikurchi up to 1.1 million. Litvinov didn't lose too much on that hand. The 38-year-old Russian is a regular in these high roller events, and he gave us a nice piece of showmanship there. You didn't really think he was basing his decision on a coin toss, did you? Ну, монетка это скорее больше для соперников такой шоу, когда монетку я кидаю, конечно, решение у меня уже принято, что делать. I don't know if the coin toss being purely for show makes it better or worse, but I'm leaning toward better. Here we go again. Eric Seidel has moved all in. Seidel loves it. Litvinov has asked for a count. Um, um. What does the coin say this time? The coin says call. And Seidel does love it. Look at him. 
Levinov with ace nine, Seidel with sixes. It's a race. Call it, friendo. A set of sixes for Seidel. I guess your coin was wrong, Harvey Dent. Litvinov needs an eight on the river. And he doesn't get it. So Eric Seidel will double up through Litvinov. And the Russian is done with that coin. <laughs> Dude, I love this guy. <laughs> He's done with every coin in his man purse. I'll be right back, though. I'm going to go get those. He knows this is not a negotiation, right? Eric Seidel now sitting on a stack of 494,000, still well below the tournament average. Back to the feature table. Action on Jim McCrink. He folds from under the gun. Dan Smith will pass. King nine for Vadim Kurzovic. Please tell me he takes out a coin. Dag it. He is raising from the cutoff, makes it 35,000. JC Alvarado with queen seven will fold. Mike McDonald's in the small blind. He's got pocket tens. Big pocket pair, out of position. Agro Eastern European already in the pot. There is the expected three bet, a re raise to 88,000. There goes a king. Mike Watson folds the big blind. It's back on Kurzovic, and he is moving all in. Wow. Oh. Mike McDonald calls, putting Vadim Kurzovic at risk. Like trying to hook up at a funeral, this move is ill timed. He was hoping Mike was three betting light, but nope. Well, there is a nine on the flop, increasing Kurzovic's outs. But we do know that Mike Watson folded a king. Two kings, two nines. Four on the turn. Just one card left to come. There's a nine to one chance we lose Vadim Kurzovic. He's out. Yep. Good luck. Nice play. That's fine to do. But Dim is overboard, and Mike McDonald is now first mate here on Captain Dan Smith's ship ship. But M. Kurzovic out in 17th. He said in his interview that he makes a lot of mistakes, but I think how he feels now is probably punishment enough. Kurzovic's mistake, a huge boost to Mike McDonald's chip stack. And so we are down to 16. We're down to our last two tables. It's time for another redraw. Mike McDonald now comfortably in second place on the leaderboard, but way out in front with a pretty ridiculous chip lead is Dan Smith. 3.4 million, 214 big blinds. There's no pressure in being chip lead. I can play loosely, and no one can really even put a dent in me. I'm just playing my cards, and things are working out well. Next time, King Dan bids to keep his chip lead in check. I was six years old when I started playing chess. It's not a coincidence that a lot of people who used to play tend to do well at poker. Mike McDonald looks to defend his position on the board. I really do want to win this tournament. And Litvinov makes his move, trying to steal more than just the show. <laughs> 16 pieces still in play. Which eight will make it to the end game?